Your bolt carrier group is another one of those AR-15 parts that's flooded with choices and options. And at the end of the day, regardless, these things only have eight jobs to do in a split second to do them. So let's talk about all the components that make that magic happen. Squeeze after squeeze after squeeze. Hey guys, Randy here with AT3Tactical.com and this is your bolt carrier group. It's probably one of the most complicated system of your entire AR-15's functionality, which also makes it one of the most mission critical. Uh, how mission critical? Well, how about this? In the time it takes you to squeeze your trigger, blink your eyes, and before you get back on target, your bolt carrier group has already fired round unlocked bolt, extracted ejected brass, cocked hammer, grabbed a fresh round, chambered it, locked the bolt back into battery, and it's ready to squeeze again. BCG uses about 12 or so individual components to get that job done over and over. So before we even discuss the materials, finishes, the enhanced versus mil spec, let's start here. BCG anatomy and how it all works. Okay, so you pull the trigger and the hammer hits the firing pin discharges a chambered round. Gases from that discharge are redirected back into your gas key. Those gases then travel down this little hole in the gas key into a chamber that's right behind the bolt. The expansion of that gas in that area behind the bolt actually drives the bolt forward to unlock it from the barrel chamber. With the bolt unlocked, the entire bolt carrier group can begin to move backward as a single unit as that bolt clears the barrel extension, you can see that it's extracting that spent round while at the same time trying to eject it. Spent casing is ejected once clear and your BCG shoves the hammer back, cocking it, slows to a halt, then springs back forward being pushed by the buffer spring. On the forward path, the BCG slides along the charging handle while two bolt lugs deep enough to just skim another 5.56 five, round out of the mag puts it right into the barrel chamber. Once the next round is chambered, there's just enough tolerance or headspace for the bolt to finish driving forward, causing the bolt to twist and lock into battery. Then it starts all over again when you squeeze the trigger. So what are the dozen or so parts that make all of the magic happen in your BCG? Well, actually, most of the BCG components are named for exactly what they do. Extractor, ejector, and so on. But let's talk about each one and what it is and what part of the AR-15 function cycle they serve. All right, so first you've got your bolt carrier. This is responsible for housing all the components of the BCG as well as being a sliding piston inside your upper receiver as you fire. There's a pretty large array of bolt carriers that you'll come across uh, mil-spec, mil-spec with enhancements, enhanced BCGs, competition BCGs, adjustable BCGs, but we'll talk about all of those enhanced ones in just a bit. For now though, true mil-spec carriers, mil-spec meaning good enough quality to be reliable enough on a battlefield, they're going to be chrome lined for smoother bolt travel, made of shot peened 8620 steel and have a cutout underneath for hammer travel, which is slightly different than the civilian counterpart AR-15 BCG. There's a few other parts of your standard carrier that you'll see, like three vents, two that vent excess gas after the bolt is unlocked and one to allow gas to escape that gets by the tail. Most BCGs will also have these series of notches to give the forward assist something to grab onto and drive it forward. Then fastened to the top of your carrier is the gas key. It is the key to getting gas from your gas tube into your BCG to continue the AR-15 function cycle, but also would be one of the first culprits to check when having cycling issues because gas can leak from sides or there could be damage on the tip up here. The gas key rides the charging handle forward and back while cycling, which keeps everything precisely aligned and also allows the gas key to properly align and meet the gas tube. You might come across some conversation about pinning your gas key screws, and here's the thing. For the most part these days, you can trust that reputable BCG manufacturers will pin their gas key screws properly to prevent them from backing out but it is always good practice to check a new gas key just in case or make checking the gas key part of your regular AR maintenance routine. 
Next up is your firing pin, which fits through the bolt tail and the cam pin and just barely protrudes out of the bolt face when struck by the hammer. Most commonly, your firing pins are made of 17.4 stainless steel and heat treated, which is pretty much a standard, but you can also come across some uh, chrome finish, nickel boron, titanium, and so on. You know, firing pins are one of those BCG components and parts that it's just wise to have an extra one or two on hand, not only because it does have a shelf life and after so many rounds will fall out of tolerance, but at just 10 bucks, this is a part that you could swap out annually if you want to or have one on the ready just in case. And of course, you can't move on from the firing pin without talking about the firing pin retaining pin or cotter pin. Obviously, it retains the firing pin from falling out, but quick tip here. Maintenance-wise, keep your eye on the retaining pin ends and the spacing. They can wear, and they do get more difficult to align as they spread, but again, this is one little part where a few on hand is a really good idea because there's a much higher chance that you lose one of these in the carpet. This little guy is your cam pin whose job it is to guide your bolt to unlock and lock into battery. There's an S-shaped cutout on the top of the carrier. It provides the cam and the bolt just enough travel forward for the bolt to release from the barrel chamber. Also, there's a slight twist that unlocks the lugs of the bolt to clear the star chamber in the barrel. So the cam pin only fits into the bolt one way, your firing pin's out, the cam is turned parallel to the gas key, and then you drop it down into the bolt. There are two ways to make sure that you have the bolt facing the right way. You can either line up the bolt with the ejector on the four o'clock position and the extractor at the 10 o'clock position. Or actually, if you look at the cam pin seat, there are two beveled edges on the wrong side of the hole. So if you look down where your cam pin goes and you see two beveled edges, you're upside down. Oh, and one last tip here is some bolts do travel a bit further back than perfectly aligned with the cam pin seat, so you might have to adjust the bolt accordingly. And that brings us to the bolt part of the anatomy lesson and talk about a mini complex system on its own. Mill spec standards call for Carpenter 158 steel, but you'll also see them in non mill spec 9310 steel as well. I would say most would agree that both are capable and reliable given the right treatment methods such as magnetical particle inspection or MPI, high pressure tested like HPT, or shot peened. On the business end of your AR-15 bolt, you have a bolt face, a hole for the firing pin, seven lugs to match the barrel star chamber, the ejector under spring tension ready to kick out that empty brass, and the extractor also under tension on a lever that opens as the bolt face and rim of your cartridge smash together. When the bolt face and the cartridge smash together, that extractor jumps the rim of the cartridge to grab on, while at the same time depresses the ejector so that it's under pressure and ready to do its job after you squeeze the trigger. More and more manufacturers are now laser engraving or etching the bolt material type and treatment types on the top side of the bolt, like this one here, which is MPI tested 9310 steel. Next to that etching, you see the extractor retaining pin. Underneath of it are the spring assembly rubber ring to run the extractor. There are upgrade kits out there you'll also see with heavier duty springs to give you a little more shelf life from your extractor. And here's the seat for that cam pin we were talking about. Again, one side beveled, smaller diameter than the other, so it only fits one way. But also right here is a common failure point on some subpar bolts or bolts that are reaching the end of their life. Next up are those little gas rings. Almost always, you'll find bolts with three gas rings. Their job is to catch that initial, initial gas like a sail to drive the bolt forward to unlock. Some of those gases are, escape out the exit two ports that you saw on your carrier, and then the rings seal and start the process back over and the bolt goes back into battery. And at the bottom end of the bolt, you have your bolt tail. Basically, its main job is to keep everything aligned like the firing pin down the center of the assembly and the bolt aligned inside the carrier. 
So with that, we made it through BCG Anatomy, but we're not on the other side yet. We still got to talk about enhanced bolts and adjustable bolts, different finishes, coatings, and what a newer AR-15 shooter might need to know to wade through all the options. Okay, first a big question. Is mil-spec the standard be-all, end-all for anyone who builds, modifies, or buys an AR-15? Yeah, definitely not. Most of us have other specialized jobs that we want our ARs to do, and mil-spec isn't always the best choice. Some of those enhanced bolts actually modify the design of the carrier or even coat them in a lower friction coefficient material like DLC, diamond light coating, or NIB nickel boron, titanium nitride to actually help them slide easier and smoother inside your upper receiver. There's also some BCGs when competition shooting is the game. There's lightweight competition bolt carrier groups. Those are the ones you'd be looking for. They can be skeletonized BCGs, milled to trim the fat, coated for the smoothest operation, but definitely not for your everyday average shooter unless competition shooting was your end goal. In that same breath, adjustable BCGs are also out there, designed for those running suppressors and who really love to pull levers when it comes to adjusting your gas. Uh, but if that's not you, probably best to stick to just a traditional BCG. I do have to say that some of the best enhancements, modifications, and improvements are to the mil-spec BCG standard. One example are rounded bolt lugs, which are designed to help glide the bolt into battery smoother, reduce overall wear and tear, and improve the longevity. But there's also always continuing improvements to coatings and finishes, which we all agree help improve smoother function. There's even ambidextrous BCGs to couple with those ambi upper receivers for left-handers, or conversion kits like my daughter's favorite, the 22 conversion kit. So many bolt carrier group options, enhancements, conversions. Which BCG is right for you? Well, for me, it's like a process of elimination. Do I need ultra light? Do I need ultra adjustable? Do I need ultra durable? For most average shooters or new AR-15 owners, probably not yet. So if you check those specialized BCGs off your list, you're left with quite a big list of mil-spec or higher than mil-spec quality. So stick to a reputable brand who stands behind their gear and just go for it. You know, being so damn easy to swap out even at the range, uh, when these things go on sale, might as well grab two different types and play around with them, see what you like. Just like that, the beginner series has wrapped up on upper receivers and all of the components, but of course we're not done yet. Up next is the guide to lower receivers, all of the components, what they all are, what they all mean. We're going to break them down individually, starting with this complete breakdown episode right over here.